The Office of Technology Assessment was established in 1972 to provide Congress with objective, nonpartisan advice on science and technology issues. In a controversial move, Congress eliminated funding for OTA in 1995. The Federation of American Scientists recently sat down with Congressman Rush Holt, a former physicist representing the 12th District of New Jersey, to get his perspective on what OTA meant to Congress and the nation. There are so many issues before Congress that have large technological and scientific components. And given the division in society between scientists and non-scientists and the fact that non-scientists tend to avoid science, these scientific and technological components of issues having to do with transportation and workplace rights and uh, the environment and uh, uh, national security and on and on did not uh, before OTA get the attention they should have and for uh, about 25 years OTA produced year after year report after report really very useful uh, analysis of the scientific and technical components of, um, uh, of these issues. Uh, if you pick up the list any day of the week of congressional hearings, and there are maybe several dozen House and Senate hearings, I would say that you'll find half of them, half of the topics being covered in those hearings have scientific and technical components. And if you go to the hearings, you will not find a single witness dealing with those scientific and technical aspects. And that's, uh, that's the problem. And then there are all sorts of issues that just aren't being covered. If we had OTA over the past uh, uh, now dozen years since it was uh, uh, abolished or defunded, um, we probably would have had a report on uh, uh, issues involving uh, um, uh, bioterrorism and issues involving um, workplace safety uh, and issues involving uh, mine safety, for example, uh, and issues involving um, uh, life support systems and the uh, uh, you know in the hospital or uh, uh, strains of tuberculosis that are resistant to. Uh, antibiotics, real serious policy questions in front of us today. Um, scientists are the ones who tend to speak up for OTA and say we should bring back OTA. Uh, we need it. And that's led to a sense in, by some in Congress that OTA is for the scientists. But of course I argue to my colleagues of, no, certainly not. The scientists don't need OTA. It is the non-scientists who really need OTA. Um, and uh, to try to give them a sense that this is not just a science think tank where a bunch of scientists sit around solving equations, having fun with each other. It's not about science policy. It's about workplace rights and health care and uh, uh, long-term family care, things that are not thought of as scientific issues, uh, but they have large scientific components that aren't or wouldn't be considered uh, if there weren't something uh, like OTA. And so that's why we need to bring it back. And we need to impress this on people so that they will begin to understand what, what they're missing since OTA was um, uh, defunded. In 1995, OTA published uh, some dozens of, uh, of, of studies, including electronic surveillance in the digital age, the effectiveness of the R&D tax credits, uh, technology and policy for suppressing grain dust explosions, screening and testing chemicals in commerce, um, environmental risks to students in school. All of those reports 
were shelved because of the change in attitude that occurred with the abolition of, of OTA. Every one of those subjects has been on the agenda this year in Congress. Um, if OTA were here doing this kind of work, um, we would have better legislation for school safety, chemical exposure, uh, exposure grain, uh, grain dust explosions, um, R&D tax credit, on and on. 